I was a complete horse's rear end to some people. And uh, the Lord said, um, uh, you know, what are you doing? And this is back when Oprah was really popular and stuff. And so I thought God would take an Oprah answer. And I said, well, God, you know, I had a rough childhood. You know, I had this. And he said to me, can you show me anywhere in my word it says if you had a rough childhood, you gave you the right to be a jerk? And I looked for a scripture, but I couldn't find one. And I had to realize that it, the man that I was was not about who mama, mommy, and daddy were. I had to make the choice to be the man I wanted to be. To succeed in life, we have to fight. That's why winners train spirit, soul, and body. We have to be ready. When the fight starts, all the theories are over. We either have it or we don't. We will get hit, but we get back up. We fight to win. Now, get ready for a tactical tip from Pastor Kurt. Hello, I'm Kurt Owen with today's tactical tip. Some of you have asked uh, what knives I have. You see the little rings. Um, and this is actually going to be really, really important, especially for you grandmothers out there. This is called a uh, karambit. Now, this uh, knife was designed by a friend of mine named Steve Tarani. It's made specifically for self-defense purposes. Now, I have grounded a little bit to make a little bit of a wave opener. That's why it comes out of my pocket like that. So if you get this knife, it might not. But again, it's on my left side. And the reason is, is so that when it comes out, I can defend my gun if needed. So I really like karambits, but if you're going to get some training, make sure you go to one of Steve Tarani's classes, or if we're in the area doing a, a seminar or something, come in and join us. Hello, I'm Kurt Owen, and welcome back to Fight to Win. Thank you so much for joining us today. It really is a privilege to be able to teach you the Word of God. We, um, we don't take it lightly. We've been talking about knowing and believing the love of God. You know, speaking of taking things lightly, I think sometimes people do take lightly the, the love that God has for us. And we don't spend enough time really meditating on it and banking on it. Honestly, uh, meditation, uh, you know, it means to mutter, turn over in your mind. That's one of the reasons we do the product offers and things like that. It's one of the reasons that we have this uh, daily devotional. Um, you can buy it on Amazon for $10 or you can contact us for us. And we'll uh, get this to you absolutely free. This really is to help you get established in these truths on a daily basis. We also have the, the um, product offer going on right now. You get all three of these. Normally it's $80 uh, for a suggested donation of $50. We call it a suggested donation because, to be honest, if you don't give anything, we'll still help you with it. But you get two sets of audios. One is God, Friend, or Foe. This is really going at it, trying to get you and I'll just tell you the cliff note version he's your friend but we go through it scripturally from the very very beginning and explain how he's really never been mankind's problem and then this is the love of God this is uh, what normally you'll hear me teach when I go into churches if pastors write in and, and ask us to come um, but all of this together really will help you change your life and it's so that you don't take the love of God lightly but you get it down on the inside of yourself <clears throat> now we have covered so, so much of this material. You know, um, I'm not exactly sure how many broadcasts we've done, but I know that uh, we're approaching the end of, the, of a couple weeks at least on this subject, and we're barely start scratching the surface. But we are starting to get into some things that I find uh, vitally important for us to get a hold of. And I want to let's put you in remembrance about knowing and believing the love of God and, you know, sometimes I know some of you think, you know, you kind of start the show the same way every day and you say kind of the same things every day. That is absolutely 100 percent true. There's a couple reasons for it. Uh, first, remember, not, not maybe if you watch every day, not every day, not every person gets to watch every day. Uh, but on the other side of it, Paul said this. He said, for me to say these same things to you is not tedious but for you, it is safety. And here at Kurt Owen Ministries, that's what we want for you is for you to operate in a safe place in your life. 
And if I have to tell you the same things over and over, I'm more than willing to do it because we want God's very, very best for you. But here in 1 John 4, and we're going to be in verse 16, it says, We have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. He who abides in love abides in God and God in Him. Now, again, there is a difference between knowing about the love of God and believing the love of God. And you actually, it's, it's not enough to know about the love of God. You actually have to get to the place that you believe the love of God, but you cannot believe the love of God really without first knowing about the love of God. And again, please go to fighttowin.tv and listen to all of these things. Even if you've been with me every day from the beginning, please go back and listen to these things every, in, in, over and over and over again so that you can get these down inside of your heart. That's what we want for you, that you not just know about the love of God, but also believe it. Now, again, I want to encourage you this uh, once more in, um, in Galatians chapter 2, something that the Apostle Paul did. He says, um, I've been crucified, this is uh, Galatians 2.20, I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Now again, this is, this is a man that what, did not walk with Jesus when Jesus was walking around the earth in his earthly ministry. He came, by, come, came around later, right? And he says, I didn't just hear Jesus' teachings and the things that Jesus said and just accept them as, say, religious platitudes. Or No, I took what was said and I applied it to me personally. Notice there, basically, he's rephrasing John 3, 16. Jesus, who, you know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, so whoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Kind of a short version. Well, what did he say? He said, who loved me, not the whole world, and gave himself for me, not the whole world. He made these things personal. And as we start talking and we see these examples from the word of God, you're going to have to make these things personal. It sounds like I'm, I just washed my tongue and I'm having trouble using it, huh? But we'll get it together. Thank God for his uh, mercy. You know, honestly, um, people say, why would you do that with people filming you? Why wouldn't you yell cut? Because, folks, I I'm just me. I I I'm going to, this is just me. I'm, we're just talking, just you and I. We're sitting here going over the word, and I'm sharing with you what I work, what I know. And if I make some mistakes, then I make some mistakes. I'm, I'm just me. So anyway, we're here in, um, first we started looking in Genesis. We're going to look at a diff something a little bit different today. But we started looking at Genesis where mankind um, took God's dream, took God's desire to fellowship with a family, and basically just destroyed it. <laughs> he uh, just basically ripped it to shreds and um, sold it off to his enemy. And then yet, immediate, even though man has, has done God wrong, but absolute betrayal in so many different ways, even though he has doomed the entire human race, God then immediately moves to give the man the best he can and take him out. Man had sown fig leaves to cover himself, and God creates for it makes him some fur clothes fur clothes to cover himself gives him the very very best available why because he was in love with him he and he still loved him even after he screwed up so bad he lost the planet and he lost the human race to the devil so in comparison we're doing okay <laughs> okay and we need to learn how to receive god's love now now that's not an excuse to continue in sin but it should, honestly, when I hear about him loving me like this, it provokes me out of sin. It's, like, it's kind of like my wife, okay? And, well, it's my wife with the Lord. You know, I, I travel a lot. Up until COVID hit, I was traveling about 200,000 miles a year, about 180. Do you know that uh, I've never cheated on my wife? And do you know, it's not that I haven't had opportunity it's the fact that I, one, I love Jesus more than I love my wife and, and anybody else. But two, my wife loves me. You know, she loved me before you loved me. Some of you love me because I'm on TV. Some of you love me because 
uh, you think that there's some glamour to this or whatever. Do you know that my wife loved me when nobody knew who I was? Do you know that my wife cared about me when nobody else cared about me? And if she loves me like that, I would never want to betray her. I would never want to look in her eyes and say, honey, I've betrayed you. And her love for me provokes me to walk in righteousness. But far beyond anything my wife has ever done for me, Jesus is literally given everything for me. And even though I screw up and even though I make some mistakes, I, I still go back to, you know, if he loves me that much, I, I want to I want to I want to love him back. Anyway, go with me to um, let's see. Let's go to Luke chapter 15. Some of this might be pretty familiar. Uh, if it is, just kind of stay with me. <clears throat> it doesn't hurt us to uh, get stirred up on these things. Now, I know a lot of times people call this the story of the prodigal son. Um I actually like to call it the story of the loving father, <laughs> okay, uh, the, uh, because we see this, this father who had two kids that neither son truly understood, okay, and I'm not sure we're going to get through all of this today. Maybe we'll have to pick up here next week. In verse 1, uh, it's, it's not well, verse 1, verse 11, it's got a 1 in it, but it's verse 11. Luke 15, 11 said, and he said, a certain man had two sons and the younger of them said to his father, father, give me the portions of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. Um, this is um, a little bit rough for a dad to take. Uh, I mean, if you think about it, listen, dad, I, I can't wait till you're dead. In fact, I wish you were dead now. <laughs> Um, but since you're not going to die, could you just go ahead and uh, give me my inheritance now? I mean, think about this. I, I, he doesn't believe in the way the father lives. He doesn't believe in the way the father conducts his life. He doesn't b agree with the way fa the father says that life should be lived. And he wants, he wants out of here. He thinks he knows better than the daddy. That I, I know better how to live. I know, you know... Uh, <clears throat> Jeff and I were talking about this break when people say, well, you know, the Bible's not for today. It's passe. It's, it's a different world today. Basically, this younger boy is saying that, listen, uh, you're not dying fast enough and you don't know how to live today. I know how to live today. And I, so give me my stuff. I want to go live. I want to go have a real life, daddy. I want to go out there and enjoy life. And so he is the younger son. He is the immature one. Now, notice the love of the father. He doesn't say, no, how dare you, you stinking kid. How dare you want me dead? No, that I'll delight here. I'll divide the livelihood between you and your brother. So the younger boy, not many days after that, the younger uh, son gathered all together and journeyed to a far country and there wasted his possessions on prodigal living. Okay, well, there was no prodigal living at the daddy's house. And so he thinks that prodigal living is the way to live. I know what I'm doing, daddy. I know what I'm doing. If I had the resources, I, I would be doing just as good as you, daddy, because I know about today. I know about the modern world. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, daddy, I'm ready. Give me my stuff. So he, he wastes his possessions with prodigal living. And when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in the land, and he began to be in want. Okay, so everything that would have carried him through the famine, he has already blown because he thought he knew the best way to live. To put this in context, he, he was sowing his own fig leaves. <laughs> hey, I know, I know. I know what I'm doing. This is what we're going to do. Now, he begins to be in want. He doesn't have anything. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, whatever country he was in, and he sent, and he sent him, that citizen, sent him into the fields to feed the swine. Now, this is a Jewish boy here. Swines are 
nasty, nasty critters to the Jews. This, this is about as low as you can get. And, but yet this boy, it says this, it says, um, and he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. What happened to all of his friends that he prodigal living with? What happened to all of his friends that helped him sew his fig leaves together? Help him think that he knew what was right. They're gone. They're gone. Now, I don't know if you've ever slopped pigs. Um, unfortunately, I've had to slop pigs. And um, you don't really give, you don't like, like if you cook steak for dinner, you don't like take a steak off the grill and take it out to the pig slop. I mean, a lot of times people think pigs smell bad, but my goodness, their slop can smell just as bad. And it's, it's oh my gosh, I, I just can picture it in my mind. And this guy looked at that slop and said, I wish I could have some of that. I, listen, I, I haven't even gotten so bad as that I was willing to eat asparagus. I mean, and he's willing to eat slop. I mean, I've been hungry, and they'd say, would you like some asparagus? No, I, I, don't, I don't like asparagus. I don't like the texture. I mean, I, I have eaten it fried with bacon before. But, you know, this is bad. This kid, now I want to ask you a question. Let's just be, I want you to be honest with me. Did the daddy put him in the hog trough? Did the daddy say, boy, you want me dead. And uh, I'm going to show you just how stupid you really are, boy. And I'm going to put you in the hog trough and show you what hog trough is life is like so you'll know that daddy's right. Did that happen? Do you know that a lot of times people, and maybe you're one of them, you're sitting there eating out of the hog trough, and you think somehow God has done this to you. God didn't do this to you. Your choices have brought this to you. And then people, you know, religious people come up with trash like, well, God did this to teach you something. No. Did, did, the father didn't put him in the hog trough to teach him something. He's in the hog trough because his decisions were stupid. He's in the hog trough because he made certain choices. The father in his infinite love for him is still available back at the house. But he has left that love, wanting his own father dead. Wanting his stuff, valuing his father's possessions more than he valued his father. And what, where is it taking him? Where is his understanding that I know how to live life taking him? He's in a hog trough. And he... Wants to eat from the hog trough, and nobody let him have anything out of the hog trough. Now, this is what happens. And he would he would gladly have filled, verse 16, he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he had to come to himself before anything would change in his life. When he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? Okay. Here, I'm going to talk about some kind of harsh realities, okay? First off, I want to talk to you parents out there for a second, all right? Um, sometimes... When children do wrong things, parents begin to beat themselves up. And I, and I perceive there's probably some parents listening right now that you beat yourself up over mistakes you made with your child or you're, you're just letting what your children are doing just destroy your life. And for somebody evidently out there, they, they've moved out. And it's you and your wife, but yet you can't enjoy your time together because you're too busy worried about your kid. Now, a couple things. First off, um, 
you could have done everything right. I, I, know, a, I know a dad one time, right? And he, he, was, a, he was a perfect dad, perfect dad. And uh, he set his son up in business, trained him in the business, and then right after, basically, very short time after the guy went into business, trained him up how, and how to live. I mean, he was a great dad. Pro, pro, he was perfect, really. And uh, so the, da- the son gets put into business. It's not a very long time after that that the child uh, ser- sells the business to his father's leading competitor and uh, basically just messes everything up. And that wasn't the father's fault. That was the son's fault. People say, well, yeah, but I'm sure the father could have done something really, done something to fix it. Really? Because I just told you about God and Adam. Are you telling me the father made a mistake in the way he raised his child? Or is it not true that when children get older, they have a right to make their own choices? God was the perfect father put his son into business and gave him a planet, loved him, taught him how to do things. And what does the boy do? Gives it to his leading competitor. Listen, even if you did everything right, children still have to make the choices they have to make. You know, a lot of times we try to blame the environment on things, and I think, I think environment does play a part because the Scripture talks to us about how Bad company corrupts good habits. And so your atmosphere does play a part. But on the other side of it, at the end of the day, and and let me also speak to the child. If you're sitting there saying, well, I'm messed up because of my childhood, because the way my mommy and daddy. No, you're not. You're messed up because of the choices you've made. Listen, I can speak to this. I was sexually assaulted as a child, not by my mom and dad, but you already know my father didn't love me. My mother had some issues. She loved me, but she had some issues. I could have just as easily said I had about, in fact, I, I, I've tried to one time with the Lord over a period of time. I was a complete horse's rear end to some people. And uh, the Lord said, um, uh, w- you know, what are you doing? And this is back when Oprah was really popular and stuff. And so I thought God would take an Oprah answer. And I said, well, God, you know, I had a rough childhood. You know, I had this. And he said to me, can you show me anywhere in my word it says if you had a rough childhood, you gave you the right to be a jerk? And I looked for a scripture, but I couldn't find one. And I had to realize that it, the man that I was was not about who my mom, mommy and daddy were. I had to make the choice to be the man I wanted to be. Now, on the other side of it, going back to this child, this father wants to help this child. We're going to see that in a little bit. But, but this child has made some choices. We're going to also find out that the daddy knows where the boy is. He knows what's going on. Now, a lot of you parents think that love would mean that the father would leave his own house, where he leave his place, He would go down to the hog trough and rescue him out of the hog trough, that that would be love. But this father, who is held up by Jesus as the example of the way a father is, does not do that. Why? He respects the choices the boy made. And here's the thing. It wouldn't have done him any good to go down to the hog trough and get the boy. Well, why do you say that? Because the boy has not come to himself yet. He doesn't, he hasn't come to the place of realizing that it's his choices that have taken him to this place. But once he realizes that, he begins to understand something. That my father, I thought my father didn't know how to live. Let me put it into a different way for those of you sitting there listening. Um, Maybe the Bible does know what it's talking about. (laughs) Maybe when God said, don't do this, maybe that was pretty smart. Are you willing to make a decision today? Listen, if you're sitting there and you've made some bad choices, 
Are you willing to come to yourself today? Are you willing to acknowledge that your life is messed up? And listen, this isn't just for the guy that's like sitting in prison. This is for all of us. I, I can look at my own life and I can look at mistakes I've made and I realize I need to come to myself and I need to get back to Father's house. And, you know, it can be in big things or it can be little things. But the Lord is correct. Now, we're going to see how the Father is going to treat this son. I guess we're going to pick up here on Monday. But you need to realize this, that if you're in a mess, God did not do this to you. Your choices did this to you. But God is also willing to help you if you will come to yourself and make a decision to make different choices. That's where this boy's about to get here, get to, and we'll pick up on this next week. But know this, God loves you more than he hates your sin, and he will take you out of the hog trough if you'll let him. Come back, let me pray for you. To receive your free gift from Kurt Owen Ministries, visit our website or call us at 1-800-215-0428. Are you in ministry or called to full-time ministry? Are you aware that we have a minister's meeting once a month called Minister's Manna? We, I'm actually the pastor to pastors and ministers all over the world. And so one of the things that we do is we have a monthly minister's meeting. Now, most of the time we're not centering up on doctrine. We're centering up and teaching things to help you succeed in your walk of ministry, whether you're already in it or that's where you're headed. Please join us for Minister's Manna once a month, first Monday of each month. Thank you for coming back. Listen, all of us at some point or another got to come out of a hog trough. So let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, for each and every person that's made a decision today to walk in your will, to come to themselves, and instead of the disaster that they're living in, they want to come out of it. Father, I thank you that you're throwing a rope into that hole. I thank you that right here and right now, you are helping them. You're not throwing dirt in on top of them. You're throwing a rope of deliverance. You've already done it through Jesus, but Lord, there's some specific instruction that you're going to give them and some specific help you're going to give them today to take them out of the hog trough and get them on back at your house. And Father, I thank you for doing that. I know that you love them. We love them too. I pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much for watching today. I'm Kurt Owen. This is Fight to Win. Remember, Jesus is risen. Victory is assured. Not your typical minister, Kurt Owen left a successful career in private investigation and executive protection for the ministry over 20 years ago. His simple, practical application of God's Word will reveal how much God loves you and give you the ability to walk in victory with Jesus. Catch Pastor Kurt next time on Fight to Win. Special thanks go to the Port St. Lucie Police Athletic League for the use of their facility.